Well, ladies and gentlemen, we had a massive announcement today. It's something I didn't think I would really ever see, but if you remember, we've been talking about here how Microsoft has been playing the long game, essentially. They're not as worried about things like specific console sales as they are revenue in gaming alongside services that they provide and leveraging their cloud services, or in this case, Azure, to provide things like streaming services, of course, and just an overall very robust uh, we'll say, infrastructure for use with uh, corporate solutions and everything. They're currently, right now anyway, competing against Amazon and Google when it comes to their data centers. And Azure is, the, is something else right now. They have invested heavily into their data centers, of course, with Azure, and they are looking to branch out heavily with it. And today's announcement is that Sony and Microsoft have reached an agreement and a partnership yeah, that's right. Microsoft and Sony. Let me say it again. A partnership between Microsoft and Sony. And some may think, oh, well, maybe it doesn't have anything to do with gaming. Maybe it's stuff outside of gaming for, you know, corporate stuff and everything. No, they specifically say gaming and entertainment experiences and purposes. Yeah, it's actually very, very interesting to see this. This is, I think, probably going to be a fairly large shift in uh, the gaming world going forward. This could be something we look back on, but there's still another thing that has to happen first before we can say, yeah, this was this was it. And I, I'll talk about that a little later on in the video, but I think that's something that's going to be happening this year as well. So Sony Microsoft to explore strategic partnership companies to collaborate on new cloud-based solutions for gaming experience and AI solutions. So let me ask you a question. What do you think uh, kickstarted this thing. What do you think got them moving on it? Specifically, probably Sony, as we've heard, Microsoft has been trying to do things like put, uh, put their own services on the PlayStation 4. We've heard this already from several different people, rumors and everything. Most likely what's kickstarted this entire thing is Google Stadia. Stadia, of course, is something that Sony would struggle, I think, to compete with when it comes to streaming with their PlayStation Now service. They're not going to build out the infrastructure needed for that because it's exceptionally costly. It's so expensive to do it. Microsoft has in, been investing tens of billions of dollars to build out Azure, and they are ready to make their money. I mean, I think a year or two ago, uh, they managed to make almost $8 billion in revenue, and it's only growing as they get more and more corporations on to use their servers for, of course, you know, business stuff, not necessarily just gaming, but, but that's where we are now. And you might be wondering... What is, uh, there we go, a nice little, little picture there of, uh, of Yoshida, president and CEO uh, for Sony, and then uh, Nadella on the, on the right there, CEO of Microsoft, uh, shaking hands and everything, of course. But you might be wondering, what, what do both sides get out of this? Because believe it or not, Microsoft will actually get something out of this outside of just money. Sony's going to be a big customer for them, obviously, right? I mean, basically that's what's happening. They're partnering, but technically Sony is going to be one of uh, Microsoft's clients and Sony's going to pay them money, <laughs> right? That's, that's the biggest thing. Microsoft is getting what they want, which is revenue. That's what they are pushing for heavily when it comes to gaming. And of course, Sony at this time is mostly known for gaming. Now, of course, you might buy cameras from them and other things, but Let's be real. Whenever we see their balance sheet or their, their stuff at the end of every fiscal year and everything, we always see that the, the Sony's PlayStation brand is massive for them. So uh, to think that anything else is really going to hold up their end of the bargain when it comes to money is eh, that might be pushing it a little bit. Although we will talk about a few things that I think will benefit from using Azure servers as opposed to I assume they were like renting stuff from Amazon or something. I, it, it wasn't anything like what they would be getting out of it now, right? Stuff that's much more capable of what they're trying to push now with PlayStation Now. Moving over to Azure, which of course will also be powering xCloud, is most likely going to be a large improvement in uh, overall quality and experience for the consumer, which is great because that's, of course, for you watching this video. So what would Microsoft even be getting out of this? Well, apparently, Sony's going to provide uh, their semiconductors, image sensors, and AI technology that goes along with that. And I thought about this for a minute. So most of us assume Microsoft wouldn't make another Kinect. But hey, 
they would have the stuff to do it and actually maybe do it fairly well, but still, mm, eh. But hey, having their image sensors and the AI technology that Sony's worked out to go along with that, and of course, partnering with Microsoft and their AI stuff, uh, along with Azure and everything, hey, you never know, they could do it. Most likely, to be honest with you guys, this is probably for a corporate level that most of us consumers wouldn't see. It, it could actually maybe used with some of their mixed reality stuff even as well, but, but most likely I think this is going to be used in very expensive projects that corporations will buy and not necessarily us. That's what I think is going to happen there. So you might be wondering, well, what's, what would Sony get out of this? Obviously access uh, to their very, very nice servers, apparently data centers with Azure, and that will improve a, a number of things at that point. Most people would assume that download speeds, if we want to get down to like the basics, download speeds would most likely improve. Now, if I had to rank my systems based on fastest download speed, the slowest download speeds that I have noticed, even if they're all wired in, or even if they're wireless, it, it goes Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and then Switch. And honestly, the PS4 and the Switch are a little closer than you might think. The Switch is the slowest when it comes to downloading, uh, and the Xbox is far and away the fastest. So I assume that when uh, whenever they do deploy this, you might see a bit of a bump in download speeds through the PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, and I think that's good, you know, to see that. Obviously, PlayStation Now would improve, right? PlayStation Now is is something that Sony, of course, has been working with. It's It's been doing pretty well, I would say. It's, it's doing all right. It's making them recurring revenue. But one thing a lot of people do complain about is the quality of it. And after seeing xCloud and then Google Stadia, Stadia, of course, is what, up to some up to 8k or whatever we'll see about that but they have talked about 4k and high frame rates and everything and if you ever use playstation now you can see that the quality isn't great so uh most likely playstation now of course will see a jump in quality probably right away although they probably will also have to kind of fine tune it because they'll have a, a bit more uh a bit more quality with azure they probably have to fine tune it and set it up there but it would also be probably help with their view right sony has their uh their their streaming service that streams like cable channels and everything it'd probably help with that too they, they they say entertainment um as well there the biggest thing about this that this will help with is that sony will not have to really think too much about uh how are we going to make this work with uh with servers here how are we going to make the playstation now service work do we have to build this infrastructure out do we have to take money and invest it over, you know, 15 years or something to build these out so we can be ready for streaming. No, by having this partnership with Microsoft, Sony has to think less about that and they can then invest money into games, of course, and uh, products and other things. So I think that's the biggest thing is it kind of takes the a weight off of Sony's shoulders, I would say, because Microsoft has spent so much time building up an infrastructure that not only can compete with Google, but I think actually do better than Google, to be honest. At that point, they don't have to worry as much about the streaming uh, future, which is good because Sony's good at making games. Obviously, we get some awesome games from them. Uh, and that's that's the exciting part is that their quality will improve without them having to do long-term investments to get it there. And then, of course, take away money from other places. They're still going to pay Microsoft, right? They, they still have to do all that. So think about it this way. If you buy a PlayStation uh, going forward with this deal in place and Azure deployed, hey, you're helping out Microsoft too. So does that then destroy the console wars? Well, I mean, I kind of, I <laughs> kind of does not really, but uh, I mean, at that point, hey, you're you're helping them out, and this is of course good for Microsoft because now they're gonna have their their uh, pretty much their service on competing platforms, right? Azure is being used, so that means Microsoft's getting paid. That's what they want. That's exactly what they want. So it's it's good for both sides, right? Sony and Microsoft. Uh, and it does make you wonder, going forward, is Microsoft, have they already, and they haven't announced it yet, as we've heard some rumors, of course, about this, is Microsoft working on inking a deal with Nintendo? And Nintendo would also use those servers, which I assume, again, increase download speeds, right? And, and them not having to worry about uh, having to build out infrastructure. Because I hate to say it, Sony, Nintendo, I don't think they have the know-how or the ability to build out something 
anywhere near Azure, right? Nowhere near that. So I feel like this is something Sony knew they were going to have to eventually do. Nintendo has to know they have, they're going to eventually have to do that. And I don't think Nintendo cares as much. Nintendo is very traditional. Sony's been, of course, moving a bit closer to like what Microsoft's doing with uh, PlayStation now. And you could play PlayStation games and stream them and, and everything onto a PC if you want right now. So Sony, of course, is a bit more open. Nintendo's still a bit more traditional, but I do think Nintendo realizes that they will also have to do something like this. And to be honest, it wouldn't shock me if it was this year and we hear about it sooner rather than later. Uh, and that would also, of course, improve Nintendo stuff pretty much overall when it comes to their online infrastructure right away. And then they also don't have to think about long-term investments and building out servers and everything. So this is, it's exciting stuff. It really is. You know, it's, it's good to see this and it, it'll be interesting to see how this is going forward. I do still think xCloud is probably going to be the best streaming service because it's been built with Azure in mind. Whereas of course, uh, Sony buying Gaikai and then using just whatever servers they can get a hold of, uh, it's, um, it's gonna be a bit tougher. So we'll see, we'll see about that overall though, but interesting stuff. Microsoft and Sony guys partnering up. Let me know what you think about this down below. Make sure you uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, uh, dislike it if not, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. We got news wave. I'll see you then.